Today we're going to look at Chrome Music Lab arpeggios and to see how you can learn to use them, uh, how to play arpeggios, uh, what they sound like, learning the relationships of the chords, and also furthering your musicians musicianship using uh, this tool. Okay, first I'm going to explain the features of the software, and then I'm going to tell you five different ways you can use this program to enhance your music. Okay, I will say ahead of time, some of you don't need this software at all. Okay, if you are an advanced musician, or I'd say even probably an intermediate musician, um, this software may not be of much help to you. But for some of you, this is going to be a major tool to enhance your musicality. Uh, especially, I would say, songwriters, this might be a breakthrough software for you in your songwriting. Okay, let's get to it. So we're going to uh, Chrome Music Lab uh, experiments, Chrome Music Lab experiments, and we're using the arpeggio. It's one of the 14 experiments or programs or games you can use, okay? And we're doing arpeggios. Well, what are arpeggios? Arpeggios are simply chords that are played one note at a time. Here's a C note. Here is a C chord, C, E, and G. And an arpeggio would be just the notes played one note at a time. Sometimes could even be two notes at a time, etc. So that's an arpeggio. And so this software will simply play the arpeggio you want it to play. So if I clicked on an F chord, it would, there's my chord. Or if I wanted a G chord, there's a G chord and press play. Now, if I want to play a different arpeggio, click, to, click on this right arrow here and it will give me a different arpeggio. I can always go back. That goes back to the earlier one. This is to the right. Here's a different one, long, slow notes. And here is a faster one. And here is a fast one with two notes. I can also go down here to the metronome and slow it down. Or speed it up. Okay, when I'm done with this, just click on this. And there we go, I can go back to that first one there it is and pause when I'm done. Okay, so there, you can also change the voice between that was a harp voice or here's a piano voice. Okay, they're both good. I like the harp voice a little bit better. Um, all right, so that's the features of the arpeggio program. Now, how can we use it to enhance your music? All right, the first way is to practice melody playing. Okay, so I'm going to go to a C chord and just let this arpeggio play. I'm gonna grab a guitar and I'm gonna play along. So let's say you're learning to play lead guitar and you go, I need some practice with that. Um, and so you can set, here I'm gonna put a C chord and so here it's playing an arpeggio. And then I can add some sort of melody on guitar. Okay, and you could slow that down or speed it up at your request. Um, same thing, I could choose any of these chords. Let's say I had a new song in B flat, I could put it on B flat and learn to do melody in that particular key. Okay, and this might be a great way um, for melody playing in a new key signature that you've never done, like maybe B flat or C sharp or something like that. And it will really get you comfortable and familiar with that key. Awesome. So that's way number one. Way number two is hearing chord progressions in a particular key. So how can that help us here? Well, um, what you do is you take the chord, and this, let's start with C chord right at the top, 12 o'clock. Oh, by the way, this is tw it's like a clock, like the old-fashioned clock with the hands that turn, you know, around the clock clockwise. And you have 12 key signatures, 12 major key signatures, and 12 minor key signatures here. And that's this is called the circle of fifths. It's a wonderful tool for learning the key signatures. All right, so uh, C, key of C here. Um, the six chords around it, including C, 
are the chords in key of C. C chord, G chord, F chord, D chord, D minor chord, I should say, A minor, E minor. Those six chords are the chords in key of C. There is one chord not in here, and that would be the seventh chord, B diminished chord. So that's the only one that's left out. Um, it is very similar to G major, just one note difference than G major. Um, so you don't, we won't worry about that, but six of the seven chords. So I actually could say, I want to do a song in key of C. What would it sound like with the different chords in it? So maybe I start with a C chord, of course. Let's hear that. And let's say, what would F chord sound like? And what if I do an A minor next? What if I go to E minor? What about back to A minor? Then the G and finally finish with C, okay? And you could try that with the different arpeggios. Maybe what if I did it with something faster? C chord, G, A minor, D minor, back to G and finish with C. There you go. So we did five different chords in key of C, and it gave me a sense of the sound of that. And I could change the tempo, and I could um, hear those chord progressions in a particular key. Um, there are some people who write melodies in their head. They hear the actual melody sounds in their head, and they hear it at pitch, um, sort of perfect pitch. They hear it in one particular key, and they, they can't find it. They're, they, they're not a musician who plays guitar or piano and they have trouble finding it. You could actually goof around with this until you found your key um, to play your song. Um, there it is. Okay, so that's the second way hearing chord progressions in a particular key. Number three, writing a song. Okay, if you're going to write a song, you're most likely going to particular put it in a particular key signature. So let's say I want to write a song in the key of A. So A major here. Um, I say what uh, what chords uh, would work in key of A? Well, we know the the six chords around it: key of a D chord, B minor, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, and E major are all going to be great chords in the key of A. Likewise, if I wanted to write it in a minor key, let's say if I want to say I want to put it in F sharp minor, also all of these chords, B minor, D minor, A minor, E, C sharp minor, and F sharp minor are all wonderful chords in F sharp minor. Here's, let's, let's just use the minor chords only. F sharp minor. Now let's go to B minor. That'd be the four chord, the five chord in minor and back to the first chord, okay? A perfectly good progression, nothing wrong with that. F sharp minor, B minor, C sharp minor, back to the one chord, F sharp minor. Perfectly good progression. Um, and of course, I could use those major chords as well. So you see how if you're a songwriter and you're writing a song, and you, do, you have no idea what chords to play, you could start with this, start with these six chords and write a perfectly good song using those chords. And once you write the song, then you can bring in guitar players, bass players, uh, keyboard players, other people to work out those uh, the difficulties. But at least you have the major chords written. All right, so that was number three. Number four, uh, to do vocal exercises or learn arpeggios on an instrument. So let's go back to a C chord. And let me go back to that first variety here and let's so C arpeggio. And if I were a vocalist, I could use it for vocal exercise or on my instrument things, the same thing. I could do the arpeggios on my instrument as well. And since we have the clicker, we can slow it down or speed it up as we want. Okay, and the last thing um, is uh, that you can use this for is memorizing the circle of fifths. So let's say those, some of you are perhaps in high school or college or you're taking a music class or you want to remember uh, the relationships of the chords to each other. This would be a great tool where you actually hear the chords 
as you learn it. So let's say you're, you wrote a song in key B and you want to remember the relationships of the chords. Rather than just kind of staring at it, you could actually play it. Key of E, okay, there's an E chord. Okay, there's A, all right. And B's, B's the five chord, back to E. Okay, E chord, uh, the minor six is C sharp minor, okay. Uh, the three chord, minor three is G sharp minor, back to the one chord. E major. Okay, so you could start, you could use it as a way to reinforce learning the circle of fists, learning the relationships of this family of chords to each other, and you actually would hear the note. So there you go, five ways, different ways to use this arpeggio program for your musicality. I hope it opens doors for you and enables your musicianships, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining.